Welcome back everyone. Welcome back to case of the month. Uh, thank you Dr. Naveen sir for providing uh, an excellent and classic case. So let us go to the case now. A 27 year old female with known case of hypothyroidism presented with recurrent headache. So MRI was done and the pituitary protocol was also done to rule out any pituitary cause or evaluation for this headache and hypothyroidism. These are the various sequences. This is the sagittal T2 weighted image. This is the axial T1 weighted image. And this is the axial T2 weighted image at the level of cella. And this is a coronal T1 weighted post contrast. And this is also a sagittal T1 weighted post contrast. So you can have the look. You can pause the video and uh, look for the findings. And now I will going. I am going to show you the findings. So this is the classic appearance we cannot miss the lesion you can see a t2 hypo intense nodule which is noted in the cella and here you can see a lesion you can see a lesion with nodule lesion with t1 hyper intensity the nodule appears hyper intense on t1 and similarly you can see even on that on axial images and on post contrast obviously it's already t1 hyper intense we don't expect any enhancement or uh, another finding or any change in the signal of this uh, nodule. So what is this? This is a classic case of rat case cleft cyst. So let us see what is rat case cleft cyst and how does it develop. So this is a normal pituitary gland development usually forms embryologically at the fourth week of gestation and it arises as a this rat case pouch arises as a rostral outpouching from the roof of the primitive oral cavity. And this anterior wall gives rise to the anterior wall of this pouch gives rise to the anterior lobe of pituitary. This entire rat case pouch separates from the oral ectoderm. You can see there is the continuation of the attachment is completely separated. And this anterior wall develops the anterior lobe of pituitary and the cleft gradually resorbs. And this forms the intermediate lobe. Uh, th this forms the in pars intermedia or the posterior wall does not proliferate and forms the intermediate lobe of pituitary and this cleft remains the same way and gradually it disappears and regresses and the posterior pituitary develops from the infundibulum process. So this is the final formation of anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary gland and this is the cleft which is usually not seen or even though it is persistent the presence of accumulation of fluid within this cleft is called as Rathke's cleft cyst. So it can be either cellular or supracellular or in between a junction of the cellular and supracellular junction. So it is derived from Rathke's pouch which we have seen the sequence of events during embryological development. It is lined by columnar or cuboidal epithelium which is very important once the cyst is excised and sent for histopathology presence of this columnar epithelium is again a classic feature of Rathke's cleft cyst. Most of the times the patients are asymptomatic. And they may present with pituitary dysfunction as, as in our case or hemianopia. And intracellular and sometimes with supracellular extension might be seen which I have shown in the diagrammatic representation. It may contain the serous or mucoid material which gives the T1 hyper intensity in, on MRI. And it shows calcifications very rarely. So this is a classic case of Rathke's cleft cyst which is also called as pars intermedia cyst. Thank you all.